Everyone feels man coming at ya. Similar to the ERC20 video that we did, I wanted to do the same concept and show you, I think, one of the fastest ways where you can securely start iterating on a, a system where you are working in Unity but interacting with a web wallet. And the reason for that is if you look at the N Ethereum concepts, if you're writing to the blockchain, you don't typically want to have a user input their private key at all. You typically want to interface through a wallet. And with MetaMask being probably the most popular wallet for interacting with DeFi and the Ethereum blockchain and ecosystem, I think it naturally makes sense to take a look at how we can quickly iterate as well when developing smart contracts and blockchain applications, and that's through streaming. So we're going to be leveraging the Fuse VR streaming SDK here to connect Unity to the web and then being able to interact with the smart contract that we deployed in the previous video around NFTs. This is actually not integrated as a sample into the Fuse VR Render Streaming SDK, but if that's of interest, let me know down in the comments below. And if you have any questions, definitely let me know down in the comments below, or you can feel free to ask on Discord and chat with the rest of the community. Just like last time, we have our smart contract here. Again, just watch the video that'll be linked in the iCard that will explain what exactly a smart contract is and how to set that up if you're interested in NFTs. In our case, we, we have it written already. So first thing you'll need to do to leverage the FuseVR SDK is making sure you have access to that smart contract and can get a copy of the ABI. This is going to act as that interface to allow you to register with MetaMask and then start running a bunch of functions against it. And if you are new to the FuseVR render streaming solution, definitely head over to fusevr.com slash rendering and then specifically head over to our SDK on GitHub. There's a lot of content here on the readme that you can take a look at, but then specifically you'll mainly be wanting to leverage the setup instructions to get started and then importing in the blockchain SDK. Assuming you're able to do that successfully and you can see here, I've kind of pre-set up a lot of the configurations that we'll need. Then you now have a system in place to start working with the NFTs and the blockchain. So let's go ahead and run through a quick demo and then let me switch over to the render streaming package. And I'll go ahead and click connect. What you'll see here is this has actually already been authenticated by my MetaMask. And for this MetaMask, it's actually going ahead and pulling in the two YouTube thumbnail NFTs that I have set up already. If I actually go ahead and switch to this Unity test one, and let's go ahead and disconnect and then reconnect, you'll now see that that third one pops up. I actually, I, I haven't added any deletion code, which is why we, we have that third one. But if I go ahead and let's disconnect here and then re reset Unity, just again, as for testing purposes. Now, let me go back here and then click connect. We'll now see with my new MetaMask authenticated that we're, we're able to pull that in. I'll, I'll again go ahead and switch back just to illustrate the point that it'll go ahead and add the other NFTs. But there you go, right? It's basically based on the account that I'm connecting with determining for that smart contract, what are the NFTs that I own? And then rendering them out into Unity. Incredibly powerful, we covered that with Ethereum, but I wanna walk through the code really quick. It's really not that bad to actually get that set up. So first things first is just like with any render streaming project, make sure you have the render streaming services prefab, which allows you to have that client server interaction happen and you can set up any of the parameters here on this prefab. So super cool there. Next thing you'll need is this NFT and two specific scripts that I have interfaced with. That ABI, as I mentioned, if we go here, it's really just a JSON file and it's literally copy paste off of the ABI we get from Remix. So once you have your smart contract, go ahead, click copy here. And just to, to prove the point out, I'll go ahead, 
delete and then copy paste that in, it should be exactly the same. And that's your ABI function. Maybe starting first with the showing YouTube thumbnail because there's not that much code here. Uh, the rest of it's really in this show NFT script, which I'll walk through step by step. We're just listening from the show NFT when a URI is received. Once we get that URI, we'll just go ahead and create a quad. And with that quad, we will go ahead and download the texture from, from, the, from the token and then render that out onto a quad. So super simple. If you want to do the same thing with, say, 3D models, you can do the same thing with 3D models, et cetera, et cetera. But fundamentally, that, that is all kind of encapsulated here, at least the logic when it comes to working with the blockchain. So I've kind of broken it down into a couple of different functions here. Let, let's maybe start here with the top, right? So we need a contract address. We are we're talking about NFTs, so we need to be talking about smart contracts. Next, we have a text asset for the ABI. Really, this is any way to read an ABI. I think the, the text asset just happens to be the easiest. And we're saving the current address that we're working with. So a couple of events, you can see that on token URL, which will emit the event for whenever a token's been received. And then here we have a couple more event listeners for determining when someone joins as well as when we get a result back from a blockchain query. As you can see, I've tried to make everything event driven as far as the SDK goes. And so in that capacity, uh, a lot of this is going to be listening for events and responding and kind of doing that in that back and forth manner. So that's what's happening here. And then once we get the client, we actually just have to wait a second so that the stream can initialize as the on client added is added just a little bit early before the blockchain fully registers. But with that noted, right, let's go down here. This is kind of that back and forth process that is happening. So we, we waited that second. We first want to go ahead and get the account associated with MetaMask. So that's just as simple as calling blockchain data dot get account. This does require that you're using render streaming. Otherwise, of course, none of this happens and you have a client connected. So that's why we are doing this after the client connects. And then that sends the event to the client. The client gets us the account and then sends that back, which we have this listener here for the result. So we, we have a few different events where you can trigger. So on the account event, we just go ahead and call this callback function that we set for ourselves on get account. So going back up here, we now have on get account that got triggered because of the fact that we went ahead and called the get account function. We'll go ahead and save that address and then we can use that in a future call. Next, we need to register the contract. This is just a very simple means to allow you to actually easily interact with your smart contract. There are other ways that you could do this. So for example, if you call the send transaction function and pass in the correct metadata associated with your smart contract, you could also interact with the blockchain and the smart contract in that capacity. But to be honest, I feel like that's overly complicated for some of the functions that are needed. And if you can leverage the client to handle some of those functions for you and interact with MetaMask, I think that's better. And registering an account contract with the ABI is, I think, a very fast way to go about doing that. So that's what the register does. And then after you've done the register, again, similarly here, you get a callback for once it's finalized the register. I've taken a different approach here where we have an asynchronous function. So an asynchronous function is it's running kind of in parallel and we are awaiting for various different events as opposed to listening for callbacks. So you can see here, we're gonna run the transaction, get all tokens. We pass in our public address as the use case right here, and we uh, pass in our smart contract. So here, we're gonna get all the tokens that are owned by this address, and then we get that as a result. That's gonna come back in JSON, and we specifically need to convert that into a set of IDs that we can utilize. There's an ID JSON field that I've created and I'll show in just a second. Then for each ID, we can now call the get URI 
function. What this will do is convert that ID into a YouTube URL that we can go ahead and actually download. Then finally, we just need to call the uh, token handler for that. And in this case, because the URL has some strings in it, we just have to replace the strings. But other than that, that's just the core loop here to actually start running the transactions. So that's the flow, right? It's basically get account, register, run all your smart contract contract uh, interactions. The next thing after that, let's just quickly take a look, is this run transaction. So this is what's kind of handling all of that asynchronous functionality. Really here, when you call run transaction, it's calling a internal run transaction function that is again, also based on JSON. When instead here, we're just saving the data and then just kind of encapsulating this flow into an asynchronous call, which makes the event flow a lot easier when you're running multiple different run transactions. So that's really all that's happening here. And then we need that JSON to encapsulate the array data of IDs that we got. So that comes in as a type and a hex, and then we just need to convert that using a small class here. So this is kind of custom to the smart contract, which is why I don't want to emphasize it too much, but I just wanted to highlight that this asynchronous flow is possible in order to make your life a lot easier when you're interacting with the blockchain. That's really all there is to it. A lot of this pretty much is just that custom flow and encapsulating that in various different events. And then fundamentally, right, you're just getting an account, you register your smart contract with the ABI so that the client knows what to call. And then that final layer is just running all the smart contract interactions you need with the account that you want, right? And the reason for getting the account in the first place is quite frankly, because we just need to know what the current account is. I don't think there's anything super fancy here. A lot of this is really just application logic to set that step by step by step. But that's exactly the point. This is supposed to be something that is fairly straightforward to integrate with and kind of start iterating for building out blockchain applications with Unity and the web. And I think that's absolutely critical exactly because of the fact that everyone today at least is using the web to interact with the blockchain and, and MetaMask. So having a means to test and iterate and build applications through the web, I think is absolutely important. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Again, any questions, definitely let me know down in the comments below, but otherwise I'll catch you in the next one. This has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.